Want to go green and still drive your car? Then a new fuel station could provide an alternative to petrol and diesel, which is far kinder to the environment. Britain's first hydrogen fuel station was opened today in Birmingham University, which will see how its own fleet of fuel cell vehicles compare with more conventional cars. Our science correspondent Julian Rush reports. Around a third of Britain's CO2 emissions are from transport, and they're arguably the most intractable. They're certainly the ones rising fastest. Birmingham University's experiment is designed to check out the practicalities of hydrogen-powered cars. Basically, they're electric cars with a fuel cell providing the power. And a fuel cell is a bit like a battery. The hydrogen goes in and air is also going in and the membranes are stacked into this fuel cell and the hydrogen reacts with the air uh, without actually burning and produces electricity directly. Rather like a battery produces electricity, but of course the hydrogen's keeping it charged up so the battery never runs dead. There'd be no point, of course, in switching to hydrogen if the gas is made using fossil fuels. And right now, most of it is from natural gas heated with steam through a catalyst. Even so, scientists have found cars running on gas-derived hydrogen still emit up to 30% less CO2 per kilometre than petrol or diesel cars. In this country, a typical chemical plant could have 100,000 tonnes of hydrogen coming from natural gas. Now, we want a green hydrogen here, so we're using hydrogen produced from wind power, from wind turbines. That's totally green, and of course, uh, that's better in, in the future. In 50 years' time, uh, when fossil fuel is diminishing and the high costs, then I think this green hydrogen will pay off. The major car makers between them are investing hundreds of millions of pounds in hydrogen cars. Most are still concept or pre-production models, but some are starting to come to market. Honda will start leasing its hydrogen FCX Clarity model to Southern Californians this summer at some $600 a month. And Mercedes plans to start small-scale production of its F600 car, which is based on its B-Class vehicle, in 2010. It's already being tested in Sweden. And BMW has a hydrogen car too, though rather than a fuel cell, it's a hybrid with a standard internal combustion engine that's been modified to run on either petrol or hydrogen, and they plan to build a hundred of them. Trouble is, it's all a bit chicken and egg. There's no point in mass-producing hydrogen cars if the infrastructure isn't there to fuel them. And no one wants to build the infrastructure if there aren't any cars on the road. And nor does anybody really know the cost, but one recent study looked at one possible scenario. If 40 million hydrogen cars are on the roads, concentrated in Europe's urban areas by 2030, they'd need some 19,000 fueling stations, costing anything between 6 and 24 billion euros, which sounds a lot, but is comparable with recent investment in mobile phone or broadband infrastructure. Realistically, for these technologies, we're talking between 20 and 30 years away. We can shorten that and we can never get there, but it's all about whether we have the will. It's that the government needs to put in the structures, the regulations and the taxes to encourage us down that route. Though there are a series of fuel cell experiments underway around the world, these London buses were recently trialled, it's by no means certain they'll end up being the technology of choice. Battery technology is improving fast, which will make plug-in electric vehicles as competitive, though again, there's the issue of how the electricity is produced. Nevertheless, in 20 years or so, road transport could begin to look very different.